That's cool. As always. Okay. George fills his container and sticks the whole container up there. Is that what you do? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which that's not fun either. But it's more fun than getting wet. Hey, man. There you go. The higher you lift it, the smaller the stream. Yeah, the higher you lift it, the more it strains my arms. <laughs> Your little baby puny arms, little baby arms. <laughs> All right, Mr. Cameraman, you get up here and hoist the bucket. <laughs> George, write down your material list of what we're making here. 10 4 by 8s by 14. So what are we doing? 10 4 inch by 8 inch by 14 footers. And what's that for? My sawmill shed. This. This. So your house. future sawmill shed. Yeah. That's really the goal today. The dueling sawmills is all about clickbait. No, well, I mean, it's good for people to see differences. Yeah. If somebody's looking to buy a sawmill, at least they'll know what they're getting. Overall, you're happy with your purchase? Yeah. You well, like you've this? had yours a year, you know, I mean. Sure. Sure. But I have an Austin. <laughs> so I, it's great. <laughs> it's great because it came with an Austin. Just this is the best saw ever. <laughs> well, I went and put options on mine after I bought it. So I cheated. Well, you want to give a quick overview of yours? Yeah. It's an LT15 wide. Got the trailer package. So it's the LT15 go. And then I bought tow boards, which are here. I bought the stainless bunk covers, which are there. And that's it. And you can mill how wide? Uh, it'll go 30, 35 and three quarters for the saw cut. 35 and three quarters. Yeah, they said it'll hold a 36 inch log that's 16 foot long. So this is built to hold them. And horsepower? Uh, 25, I think. 25 horsepower. Twin cylinder, yeah. And the blades, you went with a thicker blade, right? Yeah, so they come with 043 thick blades, and I think they're 172 inches long because it's a wide mill. And I didn't like the 042s because they, they go wavy on you because it's so wide. So then I tried the 045s, and they were better. And then I noticed they had 055s, and I figured, oh, I'll give that a try, and man, I love them. This is the same blade that's on like an LT70. No and kidding. You can rip through wood with that. I mean, it, it is solid. What's an investment in a blade? 32 bucks. 32 bucks. Yeah, when you buy a box of 15. So you could buy them somewhere else, probably get them cheaper. But I've had the chance to run your mill a little bit, and I like the power feed feature. Oh, yeah. So it'll feed into the log without. Uh, I mean, we're just talking about some of the differences, but you've added some stainless covers. Um, what else have you added? The toe boards. Toe boards. Toe boards. You gotta have toe boards. You oh do. my gosh. Those are so nice. But what he's got is he got an automatic feed, so it's actually a rope. So this rope right here will power the mill. And I was shocked. So some of the things I noticed about it is it's the this is. So you flip it up and you turn the knob and it goes. Turn the knob down and it stops. That's a nice little feature. And then coming back, it just comes back full speed, which you can see I bent my bolt already. Because you came back so fast. Yeah. Chipped a little paint there, George. Yeah, that's all right. So George has his bucket. So one of the things I find odd is the, is the uh, sawdust discharge. On the same side is as on, the operator. Same side as the operator, which yeah. is odd. I, 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 it's harder to bring your mill down than it is up. Yes. You crank up really easy. There's a counterweight in, in there. In here, there are two gas shocks, and they put 300 pounds of lift on this thing. So it's lifting 300 pounds right now. Gotcha. These gas shocks, I already went through a pair because in the winter, I lowered the head all the way down and parked it in the garage. Well, they're under maximum compression when you do that. The gas leaked out over the winter. No over kidding. The cold months. So I had to replace them. So now when I park it, it goes all the way to the top. That's parked. Yeah, and then I'll park it for, you know, a day or two or whatever. Gotcha. So, so what do you have invested in this, George? Uh, with the bunk covers and the tow boards, about 17. So you've got, George, is 17,000 in this unit. And then we'll go through some of the things that you like and dislike about this unit. I love that unit. I mean... I think it's an awesome little sawmill, man. And then Austin's got... How many hours you got on this, Austin? 
This says 45. Our other meter reads like 58 or something like that. Gotcha. So I don't know which one it is. It's around the 50 hour mark. So major differences. Um, 30 this inch is, wide. Yep, 30 inch wide mill. Right. Um, which is awesome for such a, a homeowner mill that can go 30 inches wide. I mean, an LT35, it can only go 25. That's it, you're maxed. So, so you, you beat an LT35 with that thing. It's about half the engine, right? 14 horse Kohler. Yep, 14 um, horsepower. 14 horse Kohler. Uh, some of the things that we did is we want to know, we added an RPM meter. Austin, explain the RPM meter and how it helps you. So, I mean, you can see it's just this wire. It's not attached very well at the moment, but this wire comes up and wraps around the ignition wire at the spark plug, and it's actually sensing the electrical firing of the spark plug to tell, me, tell you how many times that spark plug's firing and give you how many RPMs your engine's running at. What yep. it does is tell me if I'm running at high enough RPM, if I'm having issues with wavy cuts, they're not smooth, they're not straight or whatever, I'll look at my RPMs. If they're not high enough, then I know I got an issue. Uh, it also tells me when it's time to change blade. As your blade gets dull, it works harder to pull through the wood, and your RPM drops. So when I put a brand new blade on, I'll be holding between 4,000 and 4,100. Yeah, we juiced the engine a little bit beyond yeah. what is recommended based on uh, Dan Reed's recommendation. At 4,000 RPM, it cuts better. 4,000 4, to 41, it cuts really well. I can do good cuts maintaining 39. When I start seeing that RPM drop down around 38, I know it's time. Now, to the engine's designed, I want to be clear, it's designed around 3,600 RPM. We just, we upped it a little bit for the amount we use it. You know, if we end up having to buy an engine sooner, then so be it. But the time we mill is less. So the big things I notice about this is the uh, strength of the steel on this unit compared to the wood miser. Like the bunk thickness, you know, just the thickness of the bunk compared to the thickness of this. I mean, what is that? Three eighths? That's pretty thick. Three sixteenths. Three steel. And then this is not as thick. Uh, this comes standard with the stainless uh, bunk covers, which is nice. Uh, we've noticed running some logs probably at the very max of this machine. We've maxed out the Woodlands uh, HM130 Max with the mills. Right here you can see we have uh, pushed a log on here and took that weldman out. And, and that's actually look at the short bunk right next to the short stop right next to it. I think it's this one. Yeah a log or something hit it and it's just just a tick off you see that see, kind of bent that out a little square. bit but the other ones are still in square so if you just go by the other ones you're fine gotcha so when you're running heavy production on a mill like this but we have eighty five hundred dollars invested in this machine so it's five thousand for the mill with the extra what 10 blades and then this is a dan reed trailer from uh, argyle wisconsin so it was like 2,000, 2,200 for this trailer. And it allows us to mill 16 and a half foot long. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. I can see the advantages of both machines for sure. So it's a little harder to crank this up, but this is what I call like a serious homeowner unit where this is more of a professional build. No, this is a homeowner unit, but it, it's for slabbing. I got you. Because so. both of them are manual mills. Yeah. Both of these are manual mills. There's no hydraulics turning the logs. Uh, we are Austin. They're not is, production mills. <laughs> yeah, they're not high production mills. So yeah. if you see this pile of logs, this just made George laugh. Because this is a lot of milling. That's a summer's worth of logs. That is a lot of logs. So, and then our goal today, George? I want to cut 10 beams, so. Cool. And then I'll introduce, this is my son, Jared, my son, Jonathan, this is Austin and George, and we're going to mill as much as we can today. So these two are here to help off bear. And one of us is going to run the tractor. Uh, Austin's going to run the mill. <laughs> and George is going to run his mill. We're just going to help each other and try to mill as much as possible. That's really it's, cool. Yeah, it'll be a fun day. There's the inside of the woodland mills. So the wheels, they're about the same size as the wheels on mine. 
And this frame, I mean, that's 3 16 I got the wires, they run in this little channel. Runs down there. What a well made little trailer for this thing. So this is how you move the blade uh, guide as opposed to a lever up here that you can reach while you're cutting. There's your oil drain. On this one, oil drain is here. And this is what I was saying, removing that, it's a lever. As far as the rollers go, this is a little thicker on here, and these are covered. And on here, this is a little thinner, and these are not covered. But they got the wire to clean them out, so it doesn't really matter. They work. They work good. So here, let's see, we're at seven and a half and the handle's there. So I go around once, and then move the quarter inch per turn. Over here, one turn is two inches. So you see there? I'm gonna go back up, one full turn, and you're up there two inches. So that's another difference. You could do a lot of cranking on that, but this has the gas shocks, which go bad sometimes. So yeah, it's six of one, half dozen of another. These are the differences though. Here are the throttles here. The throttle also goes to this. See that valve there? When you turn the throttle on, the water turns on. Really nice feature. I mean, the hose is kind of small, but it's a nice thing to have. This is, this little valve is awesome. You have a valve up there. You can adjust the flow from that. Right there. And then down here, you have a ball valve. And I actually adjust the flow here. You see the water dripping there. Um, to engage the throttle, this goes down. This right here. Pull it down like that. That engages the throttle, and the blade and the uh, it hooks the blade up the drive belt, and the blade starts spinning. On this, all you got to do is push the throttle in right here, and it starts going. And then in here, this is a centrifugal clutch, so like a mini bike. And when it goes faster, the clutch grabs and starts this spinning. Uh, the blade guides. This uses two plates for a blade guide. So the blade is like sandwiched between two plates. And it does have this to, to keep it in so it can't come all the way out. And this, you have wheels for the blade guide. They spin. I have had one of these go bad already, but that's because it had the wrong bearing in it. Uh, log clamps. These log clamps are, I mean, they're, they work good. You flip the lever down, it locks it in. These log clamps, you crank them in. Um, you got a 36 inch wide bed, but these only go out to, I mean, you can see, you can't go that far over. So if you've got a log that comes out to here, you're not going to get that clamp on it. You're going to have to put chuck blocks under it or something like that. Same thing with this. This clamp isn't going to come all the way out to the edge. It goes out this way. So, I mean, it's not full width. I think every sawmill is pretty much like that. His tires, these are bigger tires than those. Like about four inches bigger. This is a car tire. 
and that's like from a Yugo. guys on it down there yeah okay now 23 inch sawing with sandy <laughs> a big guy 22 down here and it's 15 foot long 15 four 15 four this mill will cut a great big log, man. Long. Oh, yeah. A more long. Even bigger if you'll cheat you go 30 bit. inch. Well, is, do you have 30 inch across the blade uh, when you're wide open? Wide open. It's more like 30 and a half. 30 and a half. Perfect. Um, That's so, what's important on a sawmill is, is the The bigger the issue that we have is making your 4 by 8s I have to be careful which way I cut because I only have. Oh yeah, you got to cut four high, right? I only have seven and a half clearance above the blade. Come and measure this above the blade. I don't even know what it is. It looks similar. But I think little, it's closer to ten. More. Yeah, so you're getting like eleven. Eleven, okay. Which is is nice because we have run into that issue. All right. Well, what do you think? Is it worth jacking it up for the one inch of paper? If you had tow boards, I'd say yes. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it just because if I don't, the slabs are gonna be so ridiculously hard to handle. Because they'll be fat down at the one end, right? So here's here's Austin's tow boards. You gotta see this. This is clever. I really like this. So, we got this C channel. This one was supposed to fit sideways and it never really worked out. So we just channel slides wherever I need it to and I put a piece of that's a dried out piece of uh, poplar on there because with these soft woods if you just go directly to the pine log then the foot of the jack will sink into the bark shouldn't you turn that so it's facing you or no so the lever's facing you no because if I do that I can't get on the switch to let it down ah okay the sidewall. Important tip. Learned that one the hard way. And I'm not quite square on it. The hardest part of this contraption is just making sure that it's squared up good. Because if it's not, you wind up kind of, kind of taking it off of the... It starts rolling, yeah. The stops a little bit. Alright, that should be... Okay, so... one should pivot through but I gotta lose this one I should have gained enough right there and it's about three quarters of an inch so we're reading like 22 22 and a quarter there uh oh Nate's bringing the other log and my stops are on that side so I can't put the log stops up <laughs> yeah right there Inches I need down here. Here we go, Nate. Oh, yeah. I don't know about this. Didn't quite get her. Oh yeah, George. Oh. George, you're gonna miss this good pudding. With this, I got it up a uh, inch and a half. How'd you mount that on there? It bolts. Ah, oh, Georgie, Georgie, Georgie. 
Yeah, you can see that Woodmiser never considered the stainless coffers. When no, that's kind of loose, bud. I know. The bottom's hitting, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, this is a Woodmiser if you're watching. Stainless covers, this. What else? Your grip, everything needs to be redone. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the grip. Jeez, oh man. That is uh I think it's high enough. I think we got it. I mean it's not perfect, but where's the pit? How high because the pit is off center here. Yeah, you're like 14 to the pit there. Alright. And 16 down here. So we got yeah, 17. 16 and 3 quarters. 17. 17. Oh man. Alright. What size do you need? Uh this is half inch. Get a six-sided one though. Like a six star. Yeah, instead of this 12 sided yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I gotta go find a six sided socket for mine. This that isn't six sided. Dry it. This here. No. This is 12 too. No C6. Yeah, that's six, but that's not big. You're lifting it. I'm not sure which is easy jacking it or lifting it this way. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, your jack picked that other log up pretty easy. Yeah, our yeah. log's probably about 800 pounds lighter than this one is. Yeah. I don't know, Austin. These wood misers, they're like high maintenance. So you just gotta... <laughs> <laughs> wait. Wait until we have to roll this over. Oh, yeah. You want to see high maintenance? That's why we got a John boy. What? To roll well, these over. We're not rolling it by hand. We're using the straps for that. Oh. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Right. You got wheels on your uh, log stops. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. Well, look at these babies. Why don't you just grab it and roll it over? Yeah, no problem. Oh, they need greased. If these were greased, I'd totally oh, do it. They need greased. See how he finds <laughs> a way out of that one? You putting a new blade on, Austin? No, I just need to square up the one that was on. Are you going to use a dull one so George beats you? It's not dull. It's only got one log on it. Oh, okay. It'll be good. How many are on yours, George? Zero logs. Oh, on I see where this is going. I see. I gotta have an excuse. <laughs> I can't get beat and not have a reason. Right. Look, George, it's not this a race. This is not a competition. This is showing people the differences between the bills. Look, uh -huh. George, it's not a race, but if it were, I'd win. <laughs> I think it may have a hump on this knot. That looks pretty good. Is it passed? I'd say. Right there was the only spot. There's a little bit right there, but not really. I'm You're within a 16th all the way down. That's good enough. Pretty happy with That's that. That's why it's called rough cut. Exactly. <laughs>
Go real slow. Hey, hey, hey. One of you hold it up, the other come around this side. Austin, let me move the bottom over. Okay. Watch out, he's going to move the bottom that way. I can't believe they flipped that by hand. So this is the latest slab here. You can see there's like orange in this. There's more orange over here. There's bees all around me. <laughs> I hear them buzzing. And then down here, check this out. It's got red in it. There's even red up there. It's like bleeding. And as we go down here, you got the tight little knots. There's some more red. Uh, Some cool figure in there. Special. I'm amazed that you had a log that I could cut all of these out of. That blows my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's a big log. Well, I'm going to a 100 year old pine. That was huge. George's wares. Here are the 4x8s for my sawmill shed. So you got two, four, six, well, eight, 13 of them. 10, 12, 13, yeah, nice. And those are true 4x8s. And the only thing we screwed up was I cut a dip in one. At least I think that's mine. I think so. I think all the ones I did are on the bottom. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. And these are 16 foot long, so shouldn't be a problem cutting off, you know, the broken ends or anything. So those 4x4s, four those are Nate's, just some blocking that we cut. And then over here, we had a bunch of 16 foot true 2x2s, two a uh, couple 4x4s, four there's some boards underneath. I think with normal sized logs, that's a nice mill. That cuts through everything. Yeah. You cut four by eights without any trouble at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cut way faster than I was. I was cutting a bigger log, but yeah. I like the auto water on feature. Mine was just pouring out water every time we turn around. I had to shut the water yeah, it's, off. Yeah, we're not used to that. So, the auto water on is good, but that water system needs beefed up. Yeah, that, it, that it hose doesn't is handle kind of small. 
doesn't yep. handle any particulate very well. Doesn't handle any particulate, and it just needs you just it just needs to be more flow, and then be able to the, hold it back a little bit. The only thing I saw on your mill that would cause me any problems at all is that seven and a half inches you have above the blade. And you run into that. Because you want to cut an eight by eight, mm -hmm. and you, you can't do it above, you have to do it below. Yep. So yeah, I didn't think other than that, that, man. This is, I think, only the, maybe the second time or third time we've run into that being an issue. Yeah. But when you run into it, it it's really a pain in the butt. It's half the investment. It's not as heavy duty as this. So on this one, when I was cutting the standing four by eights, they kept hitting the slanted part of that. If I, I went that. eight and an eighth, I couldn't get by it. I had to go eight inches exactly. Okay. And it would so, rub. I saw that. Yeah. So the way you get around that is you leave a four by four along the edge and, and you stand your piece up stop. inside and then sure. you can go 11 inches high. Yeah. So that's called the throat, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah but that slanted part, that's a pain in the butt. That's, why would Miser doesn't do something to move the engine over just a hair or, or I don't know. Put the they gotta help you with the, the trailer. Uh, having the stainless pieces with your um, your, your oh. tow board. The tow boards work. They do. They do. That was a heavy log. We, that was a thirty-six hundred pound That's log. We lifted board. it from three feet in from the end. So I mean, that that tow board worked. It did eighteen hundred pounds. Yeah. 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 If you're doing an eighteen inch log, it comes up and down, it, no problem at all. So that was probably pushing it. I don't know. I love them. I, no, I mean pushing like, what are they designed for? I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know I want one more to go right up there. So George pointed out that these are designed so the wheels are on the ground. Mm -hmm. That has the wheel above the ground. So if you step on it, lean on it, it'll spin. Yeah, right. Where this is designed from a safety standpoint, if you step down off the mill. Yeah, but, but you know what? If you're on uneven ground, there's always one wheel off the ground. Because they're such you. small wheels. And I've stepped on it and ended up on my butt. <laughs> yeah, and I've done that on this one too. I see why the, did you pull the cranks off and just use a, was there a crank like, see how ours Yes, there crank? was a, there was, well, no, it wasn't a crank on the jack stand. There was a hand crank that you used. It had a okay. socket that went down over that. I got you. And I said, heck with that, I put it on my drill and went, mm -hmm. much easier. I see uh, Austin has put a nice little dent in a couple of Yeah, them. we need one. What'd you hit well, that with to break it like that? Sheesh. I think, if I remember right, a while ago we were loading a log that found its way over a stop or something and came off the off. backside. Might have been me. <laughs> I don't remember when it happened because the handle didn't come off when it happened. It came off the next time I went to use it. Okay. So it's like, oh, come on. But I mean, as far as sawing, there's some differences between the mills, but I'd be happy with either mill. I mean, me too. Yeah, you can so. cut some good stuff, you know? I do like the power feed. Well, Most, mostly because you can walk you can around with your camera. So, I, I'm a pretty power sure they up have down a power would be feed. Nice. Power up down would be nice. I'm pretty sure they have a feed for it, too. Really? I, I, I thought I saw something about them developing I wouldn't, it. I wouldn't be surprised me if someone built one. Yeah, it wouldn't be that difficult to build. Really. But you know what? You know what Mill would have done us really proud today? The uh, Timber King. Timber King. It's a Timber King mill. It's 40 inches wide. Uh, so it would have hand and it's hydraulic. So it would have handled any of this. And I think they're about 60 grand. Is that all? <laughs> Compared to eight or six. That is what I paid less than that for this entire property. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's choice. Yeah, well you know what though, it's a nice mill. And so is the LT70 wide and the LT35, well, the LT40 wide. I, either of those would be great. The LT40 is two inches narrower than this, so we would have had problems with this lock. How is it that when we get a mill, we just push it to the limit every time? Yeah, that's what I'm learning. It doesn't matter. You can say, oh, I got to get the next size bigger. It doesn't matter. It. If you get the next size bigger, you're going to get slightly larger logs, and you're just going to keep pushing. It's not the mills. It's us. Well, yeah. You know what I found is that there's so many sawmills in Middlefield, and they all want 12 to 18-inch logs. They'll go up to 24. They I don't understand want anything why. bigger. I understand yeah. why now. So finding logs that are bigger than 24 inch is cake. Yeah, no one wants them. No, and I'll take all of them, you know, yeah. and I do, so I'm used to beating myself up with big logs. Yeah. But it's a good time. I mean, that was, I enjoyed it. That was fun. I liked having two sawmills. 
It was cool. You know, when you were like. cutting the boards and I was still doing slabs, I'm, I'm like, we should give him a slab to cut up. Because <laughs> that would be handy to do it in stages. I wish it, I wish it would have worked out that way. I wish we would have been able to, because that would have been that? a lot quicker. Oh, it was a can't hook falling down. Oh. Yeah, good time. All right, guys. Good times. I'm out. I'm going to go boys. pass out. It's yep, me too. Get these boys home. I'm going to go eat the other half of that enormous calzone. <laughs> Woodland Mills, you pull the trigger and the water goes. I want him standing next to me on the I got the perfect ending. They do? Do a couple. I know it's going to be a cross joke. Like, that's, that's a given. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay, so how many slabs did we get here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black walnut slabs. There's one over there that's a partial slab. This one is four and a half inch thick. That was a big log, and these are, what are they, 35 inch wide about, 34, 35s, so they're, they're pretty big. After 30 inches, I don't pay attention. Yeah, so yeah, so all I got to say about this one is crotch, 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 crotch. I'm telling you, <laughs> this guy and his crotch, I just don't hear the end of it. All right, so thanks for watching.